Hey, hi, Malcolm Torres here with the Sea Stories and Science Fiction YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. I'd like to spend a few minutes and talk to you about a great book called The Story of a Shipwrecked Sailor by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So there's really two main things I would talk to you about in this video. One is the author himself and his work throughout his life and this book in particular. And the other would be really diving into the story itself and how it's put together and, and, and how nicely it's written and how gripping it is and how it really makes you want to know what's happening on the next page as you're going through. Again, as usual, no spoilers. I'm going to just tell you kind of about the author and about the book and the story itself. And I'm pretty sure if you're a sea story fan, if you're a literature fan, you're going to read this book. And if, if you have read this book, you know, give me some comments there on, you know, my assessment. What do you think? Do you agree with me? And uh, if you have any other stories that you would recommend, put them in the comments down there. Thank you. Gabriel Garcia Marquez writes this book in the 1950s, and it's based on a true story. There was a Colombian Navy ship in Mobile, Alabama, and the ship is going back to Colombia after being repaired in Mobile, and uh, several sailors are washed overboard, and the story focuses on one of the sailors. So again, you would know that just from reading the little blurb on the back, so no spoilers there. I'm not going to really tell you much more about the story. A couple little details here and there, but I'm not going to take any of the the plot or any of that away from you. This is a true story, and Gabriel Garcia Marquez at the time was a, was a journalist. He was a younger man. He hadn't written all these literary masterpieces yet, and he writes this in the newspaper El Espectador in Colombia through some interviews and research that he did. He writes this story in the newspaper, and it appears as a series of, of articles over the course of many um, issues of the newspaper. So it's a true story, and it appeared in newspapers. So it reads like journalism, and it reads like some really good investigative reporting. But the fun thing is, as you know, reading it now, looking back, that after he writes this, Marquez goes on in his life to write some of the masterpieces of, you know, the literature of the 1900s. Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote several books that are just amazing and awesome. Uh, 100 Years of Solitude, uh, The General in His Labyrinth, uh, A Chronicle of the Death Foretold, um, and The Autumn of the Patriarch. It's just really fascinating for me personally, and, and you if you like sea stories and you like literature, to realize that, you know, looking back, it's fun to see that Marquez goes on to write these masterpieces wins the Nobel Prize, awarded the Nobel Prize in 1982. And he's just a, you know, a, just a major, major figure in, in world literature. Uh, you know, growing up in Colombia and then going on and writing all these great novels and winning the Nobel Prize, you know, you, that's where most people, you know, know about him and, and read those books. And then, you know, I'm looking around in the bookstore and I see this. And I'm like, wow, this guy started off with his first, you know, real break into writing as a journalist. And he writes this very short 106 page, you know, book, but as a series of newspaper articles. And it's just, you know, it's just cool to see that, like such a great literary master started out with a with a sea story. Right. So it's just it's just fun to to kind of look at it that way. And and I kind of look at the book like. You know, this is a little bit of a blueprint for him. It's a, um, you know, he, he does have those kind of investigative journalistic chops, you know, where he, he gives you the lead and he breaks down the story for you as you go through it. And it's kind of another way to look at the masterpieces that he wrote afterward. Marquez, Nobel Prize winner, wrote multiple literary masterpieces and starts off his career with a sea story. So a little bit about the story itself. As I mentioned, you know, on the back cover, you'll know that there's this ship, the Caldas. It's in Mobile, Alabama, and it's being repaired in a big uh, Navy shipyard there for the Colombian Navy. And these Colombian sailors, they're out in town and, you know, they're dating girls, local girls, and they're going to movies. And, 
hanging out and going dancing and stuff. And it's just, it's the 1950s. So it's, it has this kind of today, you know, looking back, it has this kind of nostalgic feel, but you know, you can just see these sailors in their, in their dress uniforms and, you know, these kind of suave Colombian Navy guys and they're dating these Southern bells, you know, it, it's just like, that's just cool kind of beginning to the story. And of course they're, you know, they're from Colombia. So of course, when the ship leaves Mobile to head back to Colombia, it's got to go down through the, you know, the Gulf of Mexico and, and down past the Central America and Isthmus and, and to, to, to South America, to Colombia. And you know that they're going to load the ship with, uh, you know, everything they can buy in, in America. So they're going to get, you know, appliances, refrigerators and washers and dryers. And they're going to try to put cars on the ship and clothing and you're trying to bring back everything they can so they kind of overload the ship and that's part of the reason why the these guys were washed over the side and um you know it, they're they're on their way back and there's a tragedy there's eight sailors washed over the side and uh, again you get that off the back cover another nice feature those of you that like sea stories will really appreciate is is a map here showing you the the path that the ship took and then kind of where the the sailors were washed overboard and a little bit about you know the story so good sea story always has a good map but so then because the story originally appeared as a series of newspaper articles there's going to be a headline and then there's going to be subheaders and sections right to kind of make, make the story move very quickly and you see that right off the bat you know in true journalistic style there's a the chapter title is How My Shipmates Died at Sea. So you're hooked right away. Like, what's going to happen here? It's the story of a shipwrecked sailor, and you're wondering, you know, what what is going to happen here? And does the ship sink? Is there a disaster? Is there an explosion? You know, who's lost at sea? Who dies? Like, you're immediately hooked. And and then every couple of pages, there's there's like a little subheader, you know, death's guests so you're like you know just glancing through the book to look at the headers and the subheaders you're hooked already um chapter two the title my last minutes aboard the wolf ship and you know you see that and you read and there's a little subheader the dance begins and then two pages later another subheader a moment of silence so there's these little kind of hook preview uh, subheaders that are kind of pulling you into the story and that's what I mean by the journalistic style you know as a journalist uh, I took some journalism classes back in the day and wrote quite a few newspaper articles you're looking for the hook and then you want to use every word and even subheaders as ways to like deliver a punch or deliver a new information or transition from one thing to the next and it's, it's a great way to write, uh, you know, journalism, of course. And it's a great way to write in a way that gives information to the reader, but is also pulling the reader through and is not, um, you know, like an expansive literary novel with lots of, you know, deep narration and, and character development. It's, it's journalism, right? It's hard hitting. So, so I really like that about it. As I mentioned, the book itself, the version I have, is only 106 pages, and there's 14 chapters. So do the math. The chapters are really short. They're like six, seven, eight pages each, and they have these little subheaders. So you can easily read this book in a few hours. Uh, I've read this book three times. I just thought it was so well written and such a nice experience to read it that... Um, you know, that's why I'm recommending it. So to wrap up, I would say the two things that I came away from this book are, one is Gabriel Garcia Marquez, literary virtuoso of the 1900s, the writer of these literary masterpieces and the winner of the Nobel Prize, boom, started off as a journalist uh, writing for a newspaper in Colombia, writing a sea story. So this is just a fun and you know I'm a literary nerd so I really get off on that I think it's great and, it, and I think you will too and then the other thing is the structure of the story and the journalistic techniques but then the storytelling techniques 
uh, really pull you through. This story has so many elements to it. It's got romance, adventure, uh, survival, uh, scandal. There's a scandal in here. I mean, like I said, no spoilers. I'm not telling you everything. There is just a, a real uh, scandal that kind of rocks the nation of Colombia as a result of this. And, and most of all, it's a sea story. So highly recommended. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the story of a shipwrecked sailor. Before I sign off, I'd like to just do a quick plug for a book of my own called Sailor's Delight by me, Malcolm Torres. I'll just read you the blurb on the back jacket here. When his ship leaves for a war in the Persian Gulf, Christopher Marlowe stays in Pearl Harbor on medical hold. He doesn't know that he's suffering from PTSD, but he knows something's wrong because he can't stop drinking all night at the clubs on Waikiki. On base, the military doctors examine his head and his heart, but it's the surfing and scuba instructors who prescribe a cure. Read this book to find out what it's like to be a U.S. Navy sailor, a part of the biggest and most honorable war machine on the planet. So I'm a sea story writer myself, so you can check that out if you're interested. It's available in paperback and ebook format on Amazon by me, Malcolm Torres. Also, be sure to check out the Sea Stories and Science Fiction podcast. Uh, right now, I've got over 35 episodes on there, and they're all classic uh, sea stories from the 1800s. Um, stories about mermaids, pirates, uh, shipwrecks, mutiny, adventures in foreign port, uh, practical jokes, fish stories, uh, storms at sea and shipwrecks, and just classic stories. If you're commuting to work or you're hitting the treadmill or you're just out for a walk or laying around, you just go to any of the podcast apps or podcast websites, put in your earbuds, turn it on, and you've got 35, 40 minutes of classic sea stories. Uh, and there, like I said, there's 35 episodes, so you can listen to two a day for three weeks. That's me, Malcolm Torres. I've got this YouTube channel and the podcast. So thanks. Hit the like button, share, make a comment. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you out there on the social networks, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads, and LinkedIn. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you again soon.